My name is Nan Orock, and I'm a senator in the Georgia State Senate. Well, I'm the product of uh, parents from the Deep South. My mother's from East Tennessee. My father is from uh, Deep South Georgia, the son of a sharecropper. The whole issue of race and segregation and the battles that were being waged uh, across the South and across the nation were not uh, on my radar screen to any significant degree. It was by being at the march that I had, a, had an awakening. I kind of crept around my family and didn't tell them until many months later that I'd been at the march. My family didn't know I was there and would not have approved. I, of course, had no idea of how uh, formative uh, that event was going to be for the rest of the decisions I made with my life. I went on to, to work full-time in the civil rights movement, be very connected as a part of uh, SNCC. I will tell you, the day that I walked into the SNCC office, my father, a university, had gone to the University of Georgia, and he was coming down for a meeting at the UGA. And I had my tale about why I was going to go to Atlanta and get a good typing job that summer. And so I had sold my parents that I had a plan and that I was going to earn a lot more money by going to, to Georgia. So my father, as I, began, as I prepared to uh, catch the bus down to Atlanta, says, would you just ride with me because I'm driving down? And I said, okay. And so he clearly had, uh, <laughs> he clearly was quite interested in what exactly I was cooking up. We drove over to Atlanta and my friend uh, from college had come down earlier and it got us a room at a boarding house, and I had that address. He says, well, I'll take you there, and we start going through the neighborhoods and finding the address, and lo and behold, we were deep in the heart of the black community, and his eyes got bigger and bigger, and we pulled up to the address, and uh, the African-American woman who owned the boarding house came out on the porch. Well, Erin's not here now. She told me you were coming, and uh, she's over at the office. And uh, my father said, what office? He said, well, I'll take you there. He wouldn't leave me at the boarding house. You know, felt very protective, obviously. So we walk up the little, little narrow stairs to the SNCC office on a Sunday midday. And, of course, people worked all the time, so there was, the office was full of people. With big posters, Freedom Now. My father walks up into all of this, looking around, and all everybody's hugging me, Nan, Nan, you're back. Let's all go down to Pascal's. They're serving Sunday dinner. And my father just mute and walking with me to the Sunday dinner at Pascal's. And, of course, everybody's in there after church. And the poor man could not eat a bite. And he sits there with his food in front of him and just, you know, he was just being hit in the face by something that challenged everything about his upbringing, about the way he'd been brought up in deep South Georgia. So we go back out, and he, and he tells me goodbye in the car. And I said, Mom said you were going to give me some money to get started before I get my first paycheck. And he said, I can't support you. I can't give you money. I, I see what you're doing. I can't, I'm not going to support this. Why are you running back to poverty? Why are you racing back? He said, I've worked all my life to get out of poverty. And here you are running back to it, was the way he put it. And he just couldn't say another word, and he drove off. And then my mother told me later he had called her, and she said it's the first time she ever remembered him crying. And he was challenged to his core to be uh, leaving me there, uh, knowing that I was going to be working for SNCC.